Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Tycoon 2, the temperate forest zone of our world zoo. And we have a couple of new additions to celebrate. I am so excited because we are finally getting this exhibit back up and going. So um, to be completely honest, these aren't exactly new animals, but they are a species of animal we have here in our beautiful temperate forest zone zoo that I realized all of a sudden we were missing because our last one had passed away of old age and they had not had any kits to leave behind. So without further ado, I would like to reintroduce to our beautiful zoo the European Wildcat. I am so happy to have them back because I know a lot of you guys were really enchanted with our two wild cats. Last time we had them and last time they had kits, we definitely need to make sure that these two can get some names. So if you guys happen to have some beautiful names in mind, do let me know and then we will try to name these guys next time because they are so beautiful. I, I, I admit I'm a little bit biased to cats just in case some of the themes of what we do in our pixel biology channel didn't give that away. Uh, oh my gosh, look at that tail. But these ones are really interesting to me from a conservation perspective because the European wild cats have actually gone almost extinct, not only because of habitat loss and people kind of spreading out the urbanization of the landscape, uh, you know, housing, neighborhoods spreading, roads being put down, the cats unfortunately getting caught up in uh, becoming roadkill and things like that. But the European wildcat, especially the ones in Scotland, have actually mostly gone extinct through interbreeding. A lot of the true wildcats no longer exist because they are able to interbreed with domestic house cats. And if you do genetic analysis on a whole bunch of the wild cats that they can find, and I say a whole bunch, but I think there's like less than 20 that I read about in an article. Uh, if you do any genetic analysis on some of the wild cats, they're really not a distinctive species all their own anymore because they've been breeding with uh, unneutered and unspayed house cats out in the wild. So a lot of the house cats who haven't been spayed or neutered have been mixing their genes with the wild cats and now the species is kind of going extinct through interbreeding, which I think is really interesting and it's also a really important reminder that the effects of not spaying and neutering your animals and letting them outside go a lot further than you would think. You're driving a lot of species to extinction when you don't spare neuter a house cat. So that's why it really interests me when we look into the European wildcat stuff because of that interbreeding and that weirdly being one of the reasons that the species as a whole is no longer as populous as it once was. And of course there's many other reasons but just that particular reason fascinates me. Anyway, we can put down quite a few little playful pieces for them so hopefully we can educate our guest about how amazing the European wildcats are and our guest might be prompted to donate quite a bit for them. So let's actually put down, I'm going to put down some of the meat and a couple bones so that our two European wildcats can kind of play with that. And now we finally have another, another completed exhibit. Somehow half of our zoo ended up becoming empty exhibits, which distresses me a little bit. And half of our zoo is now actually, if we zip over to it, a wildlife park. Look at this, you guys. I think that building this into a big, beautiful forest, a national forest, and letting our deer and other extra bred up species, like maybe putting in some big lakes over here for our extra beavers, or encouraging some of our catfish to swim in the lakes. I think this will be really fun, especially once we start having kind of a balance of the different species by adding in some predators, including predators. I have never before used in Zoo Tycoon 2. So I'm really excited to do that. I actually want to build a big giant lake today. Oh my gosh, look how many deer we have. We have so many deer. Oh yay, and we just became more famous for who knows what reason. <laughs> oh my gosh, but I do want to actually, um, oh my gosh, we need, we need like a wolf pack. We need like a cougar. We need something to start working through all of these deer because there's so many of them. Our little Jeep tour can't even go on its full tour. Is that a peacock? Is that a pea? Oh, it's a duck. <laughs> 
I was gonna be like, how did a duck manage to wiggle into our, our deer forest? Uh, or excuse me, a peacock wiggle into our deer forest. But you can see how crowded it gets. There's a whole bunch of wild turkeys. So we definitely need to try to provide a little bit more balance when it comes to the uh, ecosystem of our quote unquote national forest pretty soon. Let me rename the Jeep tour actually so that I can give it a cool name. Let's call it Oakway, uh, Oakway Trails. There we go. And then people can wiggle along and they can hopefully enjoy seeing all of the various animals inside of this big forest, of which there seem to be way too many at the moment. Also, somebody's... <laughs> Beaver84 wants to reproduce but can't find a mate. Well, Beaver84, there are so many beavers in your lake right now. I think we're going to go ahead and we are going to release this guy to the wild, which will help our zoo fame and it will also help our overpopulation of beavers over here. I believe normally when a beaver family reaches um, maturity, like when their kids reach maturity, sometimes the children will stay to help with the next generation, to help with like their siblings. But most of the time they'll go off and become independent beavers looking for a pond of their own to take over. And that's one of the reasons I want to add a lot of lakes and ponds into our big national forest, because this is kind of ridiculous. Also, European 13 or European Porcupine 13 has killed their sibling again. I cannot turn my back on these porcupines. That is so embarrassing. Oh my gosh, no wonder everybody's over here. Oh, and apparently this woman really loves turkeys. Well, good on you, lady. Good on you. But um, geez, no wonder everybody's over here. They're witnessing like the vicious cycle of life and death at my zoo. Let's go ahead and release like, okay, so that's a female um, and she's got two siblings with them still. So let's go ahead and we're going to adopt out porcupine number 11. And then we'll go ahead, make sure that you're completely alone before your siblings kill you. And we will release to the wild Porcupine 12. And hopefully that'll keep poor little Porcupine 13 alive for a little bit. And we can eventually find a male. In fact, we'll add in a male now. Uh, let's try, come on, come here. I wanna, I wanna get you, I wanna get you a male of your very own. A uh, boy Porcupine, please. <laughs> All right, darn, I think I can only use that to find other girl pines. But if we jump over here, wild boar, ooh, wild boars. <gasps> that would be an interesting thing to add into the big national forest. Oh, that would be so cool. All right, let's see. And actually snapping turtles, how fun would that be to add into a big old pond? My goodness, there's so many animals we can add in. Oh, actually, I think I have an exhibit that we could put snapping turtles in. I think we do have an exhibit we could put snapping turtles in, you guys. Hang on a second. Hang on a hot second. Also, sorry about the little lag jitters now and then. Remember, this is a very old game. <laughs> very, very old game. But let's go ahead. I'm going to save really quickly just because it crashed on me earlier. Well, some of the beauty of nature with all of you. But this pond over here is also another empty exhibit that we need to fill up, just like the European wildcat exhibit. And it actually used to have these really amazing birds um, that were just a little too aggressive with one another. They're actually, in real life, one of the few large cannibalistic cranes, I think. I'm going to have to look up the details again, but it was quite dramatic once, while they were here. And I think this area would be perfect to actually end up with some snapping turtles. I think that they would do very well over here, some big giant alligator snapping turtles. I've actually seen some of them in real life, and if you ever want to see like a compact little dinosaur up close, that's kind of what it feels like when you see an alligator snapping turtle. Though truthfully, if you ever want to see a compact little dinosaur up close, you guys can always just look at my finches, but that's a conversation for another day. All right, anyway, let's add in a male snapping turtle to kind of be king of this roost and give life back to this exhibit. And let's make sure that he has all the things that he would possibly need. Um, like, let's see, this wetlands rock formation would probably be a good thing to add in for him. So we'll stick that into the lake. And then let's see, what else might he need for enrichment? Maybe the, the little like fog misty machine. Is there somewhere I could add that into his pond? Not really, it's kind of a huge item. Uh, and he needs his food. So let's make sure we have some food placed somewhere on the bottom. Hello, Mr. Snapping Turtle. I can't really see where your food goes actually because he's disappeared into the water. Okay, maybe this isn't going to add as much life as I thought. 
back into the exhibit if people can't even see like what's inside the exhibit. That's kind of funny. Um, let's go ahead and get the artificial marine carcass. Oh, I think that was a splash from him. Let's see. And here's an artificial reef with shellfish. Would you like that, sir? Oh my. It might be a little harder to put food in here for him than I anticipated. Uh, cause I think we need to make the water a little bit lower. So let's try, let's try making the water a little lower for a second. Let's do deep water. Just a little patch of deep water really quickly. All right, whoops. Oh, there he is. <laughs> he surfaced you guys. We've brought him to the forefront by accident. Um, give me just a second, Mr. Snapping Turtle, and I'll get you back into that, that lush wetlands. Let's go over to wetlands if I can find it. I have all of these really cool custom biomes, but sometimes it can be a little tricky to figure out where I'm going. Lush, do do do. I could have sworn I saw wetlands. Hmm, give me just a second. Ha, now I feel silly. They hide at the very, very back. So I found them. All right, there we go. And now the water is the right color for this guy. And he's spinning in, in circles as we try to clear out the space so that we can put down. Can I put his food down now? Oh, there we go. All right, and there, he's got some food hiding in the bottom of the lake now. Hopefully this lake will make him very happy. Uh, oh, and he does have the sunken trees and everything like that too on the big slider island. Let's get that, let's research that. And even if we have to clear out extra room to make space for it, then he might come up so that people can actually see him and he won't just hide in the water all the time. At the North Carolina Zoo, they actually have huge snapping turtles. Hun like and There must be hundreds of them, no joke. I, I mean, hundreds sounds like an exaggeration, but when you look over the, the bridge leading into the North Carolina Zoo, there's a gigantic river that goes around the uh, African side of the zoo. And there are so many snapping turtles in there. And there's some gigantic, huge alligator snapping turtles that I always love to zoom my camera in on because they are quite large, you guys. They're a beautiful, majestic beast for sure. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead. I think I can put the little log, one of the little logs right at the back there. And we might actually remove this burr oak and try putting down the big slider island in the corner if we need more room so that people can see him up close and personal. All right, buddy, let's see, where'd you go? <laughs> see, I wonder if he'll put up with, oh, there is a splash. He's in there, Captain. He's somewhere under those leaves. Oh yes, and the artificial marine carcass. Oh, well, that's good, but I didn't really care about the artificial marine carcass. There we go, the big slider island. Oh good, and it can kind of go pretty much anywhere. I just feel like it would go best if it was sort of in this corner and then kind of like right up close to where everybody was looking. So I think I am gonna, well, but that, that oak tree is so majestic. It's so awesome. And it's so literally right on the edge of where you can put it. So, hmm, all right. I think we'll go ahead and try putting the big slider island sort of at the back like this. I don't think I've ever used it before, so it's gonna be really interesting to see if he'll actually come out onto it and he'll kind of relax, recline, and have a good time on top of this lovely island. Um, and maybe I will put some ducks over here as well. And that's kind of sad because ducklings actually can be one of the food resources of a big turtle like that. But I think maybe some of our ducks would be happy waddling around in this little area. Oh, an Ethiopian wolf just died of old age. That's so sad. <gasps> there he is, you guys, success. Did you see that? Oh my gosh. Ah, I am tripping over fish. I want to see, oh, look at him go. Look at him go! Oh, that majestic turtle! Oh, he's beautiful! Oh my gosh, he's actually on the slider island. I am so tickled to pieces. I didn't think he would actually do it, but he is! He's hanging out on the island! He's just kind of like, zipping over to the other side. Look at his little feet go! And back into the water. Oh, that was so cool! Maybe he will be a good exhibit for some people. It looks like that guy is enjoying seeing him. All right, and again, sorry about the lag. It is, it is just the fact that Zoo Tycoon 2 is a very ancient game. But all right, let's get out of the water. So I think you'll be happy. It looks like there's some people who are happy to have the turtle to look at. And that fills up some of the empty exhibit area. And we can actually go ahead and see, maybe we have some more animals that we could add in here as a multi-species exhibit. Uh, I think we only want one turtle for now because snapping turtles live a very long time too. So it's not like there's a lot of pressure to make sure that he has babies before he passes away. Um, but who to add in over here? Maybe 
bunnies. Like we could try adding in some of the Sumatran striped rabbits and just pretending they're jackrabbits. Um, it'd kind of be fun to add in some otters, to be completely honest, but I feel like this is kind of a small exhibit for otters. I do feel like it'd be really fun to add another big, beautiful exhibit and the otters could play and frolic. Uh, this exhibit's a little smaller, so creatures that don't need a lot more in life, like the ducks, might be really nice to add in. We're trying to stick to mostly like temperate forest type animals, but we can kind of poke around to some of the other species now and then. Oh, uh, let's see. What's this? Great hornbill. And then, whoops. And then let's see. What else? What are some other really awesome options for animals that we could add in? We have some of our, let's see, Eurasian cats. Are they Eurasian? That's the sand cat. And then we've got the Asian golden cat. And then let's see. Oh, maybe we could actually add in. <laughs> Hang on a second. We could actually add in a couple bluegill. So we'll put in like three or four bluegill and they'll like swim around in circles. You only want to put one gender of fish in because the way the, the fish are actually coated, they will never die and they will breed infinitely and you can really get overwhelmed with fish. But people love watching fish. Like just making little fish ponds is really, really popular in our zoo. So hopefully they'll enjoy seeing just a few little bluegill kind of swim around like that. And you know what we could add in? I feel like maybe a happy beaver wouldn't mind. Wouldn't mind. Like we could start, let's start spreading our beaver families out and about. That might actually work out pretty well for us. So let's try moving beaver 92 over here. And does he have, he has a sibling. Uh, I'm sure that there's plenty of unrelated, or she has a sibling. There's plenty of unrelated male beavers in, in that gigantic pile of beavers. And they might just enjoy kind of relaxing and having their own little extra beaver spot in the back corner. And then basically we could become known as the beaver, <laughs> the huge beaver uh, zoo because we've just got nothing but beavers. It's, it'd be amazing. And she might even build a little dam inside. There we go. We'll put down a few branches in some random spots and just see if our beavers enjoy those. But I like that idea actually, spreading our beaver population through the entire zoo. If we've got an empty pond, then we're going to add a beaver. But let's see, here is an unrelated male beaver. So we'll grab him and put him down over here. And I guess I need dozens of beaver names then <laughs> because we're going to have so many beavers. But let's get away from that for just a second and pop it down. There we go. All right, and apologies if I seem a little distracted. The uh, game was actually crashing a lot on me earlier. We recorded like two whole episodes that didn't come out because the game crashed at the very end. So I'm just kind of crossing my fingers and really hoping that everything will come out okay. <laughs> and that we'll be able to enjoy our beavers and we'll be able to enjoy our, our new alligator turtle. All right, come here, little boy. How you doing, buddy? Hi, look at your fur. I hope you're gonna, yeah, checking out the new area. What do you think? What do you think? It's a nice multi-species exhibit where the bluegill are beaching themselves. whoops a doops All right, well, let me go ahead and fix that. <gasps> bluegill floor, get back in the water. There we go. And hopefully that will entertain some of the people. They will have at least our little beaver family to watch. And we might add in some ducks in a little bit. And then everybody can just kind of relax and watch this tiny little pond area. And we might even expand the pond as time goes on, because that's what beavers do. As a keystone species, blocking off a small stream helps to build entire ponds and eventually even lakes that change the landscape permanently. So we'll have to see. Maybe our little beavers here will actually end up uh, really expanding just how big this spot's going to be. All right. Are you guys doing good? <gasps> Did they just... Oh, they're definitely mates now, but they don't have any babies yet. So they were looking at the lettuce and they were thinking about having babies. So that would be fun to have a bunch of new beaver babies. And there is a little stream over here that actually connects up this exhibit to this exhibit over here, which I hope isn't empty. Why do we have so many empty exhibits? <laughs> Truly, is this exhibit empty too? Did we lose the tiny little creatures that used to, used to jump around in here? No, there they are! The mongoose! 
<laughs> we still have our mongoose! Yay! I think it's just one mongoose, but I think that our mongoose are still alive and kicking, so we don't have to worry about filling up that empty exhibit. But all right, that's going pretty well, you guys, but I am definitely ready. We'll scooch beavers around because I actually do love the idea of having beavers in every possible exhibit that could have beavers. I'm a little beaver obsessed when it comes to uh, this, this really fun, beautiful zoo. But I think next time we're actually going to try to add in some new animals that we haven't had before. We will start looking into things like bears, foxes, cougars, crows, some of the other amazing temperate forest species that would definitely benefit from getting a little bit of spotlight in this zoo. And we might try working a little bit more on our national park because I do think it would be really fun to put in like a big beautiful lake with tiered waterfalls right here that we could fill with beavers and catfish and all of the animals that we breed in our zoo. So when we say things like popping over to the beaver exhibit, for instance, which is definitely overpopulated right now, when we say we release them into the wild, then we could say that sometimes we release them into the wild of the big national park that we would have right at the back over here. And I think it will be really interesting as we start putting food resources down in the park and spreading them around the place. And as we start adding in predators to see if there's going to be a sustainable balance, even though acknowledged that the game doesn't really pl like play that way. But we can see if there would be a stable balance between prey and predator here in our national park. And I don't know about you guys, but I think having foxes and cougars roaming this forest would make the little jeep tour interesting enough that people might start actually going on it again, which would make me quite happy. But all right, guys, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.